Mr. Winterbottom said, Norma, I hope you are going to explain exactly what's going on here. He was trying to make his voice firm, but it trembled. Prudence stood there, staring at Mike. She seemed to find him quite handsome and was flirting with him. She fluffed her hair away from her neck. Mrs. Winterbottom went up to Mr. Winterbottom and tried to put her arms around him, but he pulled away. I think we deserve an explanation, he said. He was staring at Mike. So was I. I was quite confused. Was she in love with Mike? And if she was in love with him... He seemed awfully, awfully young. He seemed he didn't seem much older than Prudence. Mrs. Winterbottom sat down on the sofa and began to cry. It was a terrible, terrible moment. It was thumpingly hard to make any sense out of what she said at first. She was talking about being respectable and how maybe Mr. Winterbottom would never forgive her, but she was tired of being so respectable. She said she had tried very, very hard all these years to be perfect but that she had to admit she was quite imperfect. She said there was something that she had never told her husband, and she feared he would not forgive her for it. Mr. Winterbottom's hands were trembling. He did not say anything. Mrs. Winterbottom motioned for Mike to join her on the sofa. Mr. Winterbottom cleared his throat several times, but still he said nothing. Mrs. Winterbottom said, This is my son. I think Mr. Winterbottom... Prudence, Phoebe, and I all said at exactly the same time, your son? Mrs. Winterbottom stared at her husband. George, she said, I know you will think I am not or was not respectable, but it was before I met you and I had to give him up for adoption and I could hardly bear to think of it. And Mr. Winterbottom said, respectable, respectable, the hell with respectable. Mr. Winterbottom did not normally swear. Mrs. Winterbottom stood up. Mike found me, and at first I was frightened of what that would mean. I've lived such a tiny life. Phoebe took her father's hand. And I had to go away and sort things out. I haven't yet met Mike's adoptive parents, but Mike and I have spent a lot of time talking, and I've been thinking. Mike sat there looking down at his feet. Are you going to leave? Mr. Winterbottom asked. Mrs. Winterbottom looked as if she had, as if he had slapped her. Leave, she said. Again, I mean, Mr. Winterbottom said. Only if you want me to, she said. Only if you can not live with such an unrespectable. I said to hell with respectable, Mr. Winterbottom said. What's all this about respectable? It's not respectable I'm concerned about. I'm more concerned that you couldn't or wouldn't tell me about any of this. Mike stood up. I knew it wouldn't work, he said. Mr. Winterbottom said, I have nothing against you, Mike. I just don't know you. He looked at his wife. I don't think I know you either. I was wishing I was invisible. I stared out the window at the leaves falling to the ground, and I was infinitely sad, sad down to my bones. I was sad for Phoebe and her parents and Prudence and Mike. I was sad for the leaves that were dying, and I was sad for myself for something I had lost. I saw Mrs. Partridge out front, standing on Phoebe's front walk. Mr. Winterbottom said, I think we all need to sit down and talk. Maybe we can sort something out. Then he did what I think was a noble thing. He went over to Mike and shook his hand and said, I did always think a son would be a nice addition to this family. Mrs. Winterbottom looked extensively relieved. Prudence smiled at Mike. Phoebe stood quite still off to the side. I'd better go, I said. Everyone turned to me as if I had just dropped through the roof. Mr. Winterbottom said, Sal, oh, I'm so sorry. I truly am. To Mike, he said, Sal is like another family, like another member of the family. Mrs. Winterbottom went over to Phoebe. You're mad at me, aren't you, Phoebe? Yes, Phoebe said. I most, I most certainly am. Phoebe took my sleeve and pulled me toward the